Major League Baseball is going to look different in 2025, specifically in Oakland. After the conclusion of the 2024 season, the Oakland A's lease at the Coliseum will expire and leave them with no permanent home. After years of attempting to strike a deal with the city of Oakland, the A's look all but guaranteed to leave the town. We can spend time throwing blame around, but at the end of the day, Oakland as a city deserves better. Oakland fans deserve better. A's ownership has failed the very fans who watched them put forth a half-assed attempt to field a competitive team for the last three seasons, despite being in the playoffs as recently as 2020. On April 20th, 2023, the A's announced that they had signed a binding agreement to buy land in Las Vegas to build a new stadium, all but ending any attempt to stay in Oakland. The A's have been in Oakland since 1968, winning four championships, including three in a row from 1972 to 1974. However, the A's have been more widely known as the Moneyball Team, where GM Billy Bean famously implemented an analytics-based strategy to build a winning ball club. And in the 2002 season, the A's won 20 consecutive games on their way to winning the American League West. Though they lose to the Yankees in the playoffs, the A's push toward using advanced analytics to evaluate players became more widely adopted after the 2002 season. Most notably, the Boston Red Sox approached Billy Bean in an effort to use the same strategy to break their World Series drought. Bean turned down the Red Sox, who then hired Theo Epstein and eventually went on to win the World Series in 2004, breaking the curse of the Bambino and ending their 86-year wait for a championship. At face value, seeing teams adopt advanced analytics around the league should be a good thing, right? More teams will feel like they can compete with the Yankees and other big market teams without spending obscene amounts of money. Teams like the Red Sox, Rays, and Dodgers are prime examples of teams that have employed analytics very effectively and reaped the rewards accordingly. But over the last few years, teams coming to the realization that building a winning ball club doesn't necessarily cost a fortune has come to hurt players and fans alike. Teams are cutting costs everywhere they can, primarily coming in the form of payroll. And the result is usually pretty non-competitive teams. The 2023 Oakland A's have gotten off to one of the worst starts in the history of Major League Baseball. They have the worst offense, worst pitching staff, and by far, the worst attendance around the league. And who can blame fans for not showing up to games? A's owner John Fisher is arguably the chief architect of the team's decline and impending move to Las Vegas. By refusing to shell out more of his own money to build a new stadium in Oakland, Fisher has effectively told the city of Oakland that they're responsible for fixing the Coliseum. The A's are currently the only tenant of the Coliseum, and the problems with the stadium have been well documented over the years. From a possum living in the visiting broadcasting booth to feral cats and basic plumbing issues in the clubhouses, the Coliseum has been a nightmare for both the A's and visiting ball clubs. You could argue that the Raiders also leaving Oakland for Las Vegas is an indictment of the city, not of the owners. But let's not forget that John Fisher, the youngest son of the founders of Gap, has a net worth of $2.2 billion, and Raiders owner Mark Davis has a net worth of $1.9 billion. Placing the blame on the city of Oakland for refusing to shell out hundreds of millions to build a new sporting venue is irresponsible at best, and it's no stretch to assume that billionaires have the capital to help front the bill for a new stadium, especially when teams like the A's continue to cut payroll when revenues across the league continue to rise. Oakland deserves so much better than this. The A's have let their fans down, they've let the city down, and they've tarnished the history of one of the most storied franchises in sports. Even as recently as 2019, the A's had a very talented team with a solid foundation for the future. But of the players still on the roster from this team, only Ramon Laureano and Paul Blackburn remain with Oakland. The A's haven't always had this level of indifference when it comes to fielding winning teams, and the 2019 squad is proof of that very idea. The one group that stands to lose the most from this whole debacle is, of course, A's fans. And on June 13th, the Oakland faithful let their voices be heard. In a show of resistance toward John Fisher and the A's ownership group, A's fans packed the Coliseum to the tune of 27,000 plus, creating a playoff-like atmosphere in the Coliseum for their series against the big, bad Tampa Bay Rays. And in the middle of a winning streak, the A's pulled out a 2-1 win in front of a raucous crowd of fans. At one point in the game, the stadium went completely silent for a batter and then immediately started chanting, sell the team, so loudly that the pitcher couldn't even hear the pitchcom device in his hat. Hogan can't hear with the pitchcom because of the crowd. And 
A's fans made one thing very clear. They aren't the problem. A's fans have been given the short end of the stick by the organization, specifically John Fisher and ownership, time and time again, and they decided to do something about it. But of course, Major League Baseball in the modern era cannot exist without Commissioner Rob Manfred opening his mouth and making the problem 10 times worse. And indeed, when speaking to reporters on June 15th, Manfred said the following about the A's impending relocation. I feel sorry for the fans in Oakland. I do not like this outcome. I understand why they feel the way they do. I think that the real question is what is it that Oakland was prepared to do? There is no Oakland offer, okay? They never got to a point where they had a plan to build a stadium at any site. And it's not just John Fisher. The community has to provide support and you know, at some point you come to the realization, it's just not going to happen. Manfred later said that he did not see the reverse boycott that evening because he was at dinner with the owners. Go figure. He also said that it was nice to have an average sized crowd at a major league facility. What a slap in the face from the commissioner of baseball. In response to the city's alleged lack of a proposal to the A's, Oakland Mayor Shang Tao then released the following statement. This is just totally false. There was a very concrete proposal under discussion and Oakland had gone above and beyond to clear hurdles, including securing funding for infrastructure, providing an environmental review and working with other agencies to finalize approvals. The reality is the A's ownership had insisted on a multi-billion dollar 55 acre project that included a ballpark, residential, commercial and retail space. In Las Vegas, for whatever reason, they seem satisfied with a nine acre leased ballpark on leased land. If they had proposed a similar project in Oakland, we feel confident a new ballpark would already be under construction. At the end of the day, it's Major League Baseball's owners who signed Manfred's paycheck. He reports to them, not to the fans, not to the players, not to anyone else. So it's not totally surprising to see Manfred give that kind of response. But just when you thought the reverse boycott saga was over, Manfred tried to walk back his comments by claiming they were taken out of context. Manfred later said, My comment about Oakland was that I feel sorry for the fans, that it was my initial preference that we find a solution in Oakland. The comment that I made about the fans on a particular night was taken out of context of those two larger remarks. I feel sorry for the fans. We hate to move. We did everything we possibly could do to keep the team in Oakland. And unfortunately, one night doesn't change a decade worth of inaction. The A's look set to leave Oakland after the 2024 season, ending a storied era for one of America's great sporting franchises. Even Las Vegas natives like Bryce Harper and Bryson Stott are against the move. They think Vegas should get their own franchise, not the A's. But as it stands now, the move will leave the bitter taste of disappointment for those who call Oakland home and for those who live and die by the green and gold. Oakland. My heart breaks for you. You deserve so much better than this. You deserve so much better than John Fisher and Rob Manfred.